Hello, my name is Penny Stratton, Publishing Director of New England Historic Genealogical Society, AmericanAncestors.org. Today, NEHGS is proud to welcome author Alan Chernoff, co-author with his mother, Raina Margulies Chernoff of The Tailors of Tomaszow, a memoir of Polish Jews, published in 2014 by Texas Tech University Press. Mr. Chernoff, welcome to NEHGS. The Tailors of Tomaszow is notable for a number of reasons. Two of the principal ones are that your mother, Reina, is one of the youngest Holocaust survivors, having been liberated from Auschwitz 70 years ago this week at the age of 11. Another is that this book is not just Reina's memoir, but a collective memoir, a memoir of relatives and other survivors of Tomaszow. In just a few sentences, can you explain what your book, The Tailors of Tomaszow, is about? The Tailors of Tomaszow is a communal memoir and history of the survivors of the town of Tomaszow Mazowiecki, which is a town in central Poland. Uh, before the war, there were as many as 14,000 Jews before World War II. Uh, today, there are virtually no Jews at all in the town, and the town has grown significantly since then. Wow. How did you and your mother come up with the idea of doing a collective memoir? Well, uh, the truth is what I first tried to do was just get my mom to write her story. Just mm -hmm. uh, get the information down on paper. Mm -hmm. um, I also recognized it was essential to interview as many of the survivors as I could find. And I knew that they were living history and that if that history were not written down, if it were not recorded, it would be lost. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's, there's so many great histories about the Holocaust. Uh, there's so much that's been written about the big cities, Warsaw, Krakow. Nobody's written about Tomaszow. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I felt, uh, as a journalist, as a child of a Holocaust survivor, if I don't do it, it's not going to happen, and so I felt always for a very long time that I must do this, mm -hmm. that I must collect these stories. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I figured, okay, how am I going to put it together? How will it fi fit together? And I put the pieces of the puzzle together, and uh, that's the book. You've remarked that you felt compelled to write this book. Can you talk about that and the reasons for completing this project? and maybe also talk about your mother's attending the um, Holocaust survivors gathering in 1980 and what that did for her. Right, so uh, Holocaust survivors have different ways of dealing with the fact that they lived through um, the unimaginable, that they lived through hell on earth. Um, some simply can never go back, can never look back and they just want to move forward and just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them uh, didn't talk about it for years and then only in their later years they opened up. Uh, for my mother I, I say we had what I call a, a mutual conspiracy almost. I didn't really ask her as a child and she didn't really tell me much as a child. She didn't want to hurt me, I didn't want her to be hurt, her to have to relive those, mm -hmm. those horrible memories. Uh, but in 1980, she attended uh, one of the first big survivor conferences, and that opened her up. She saw that there were many other people like her, because she was a child survivor. There were not all that many child survivors. The relatives that she knew, the cousins, and there were not many, but the relatives that she mm -hmm. did have who did survive were pretty much mostly from the older generation. She really had only one or two contemporaries, so she felt a little bit alone, a little isolated. Mm -hmm. uh, going to a conference opened her up and made her recognize the importance of sharing the history, of talking about it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I seized the moment. <laughs> and that's when I, I began to question her and mm -hmm. have her start writing down. Mm -hmm. As family historians, we're particularly interested in how you and your mother went about your research finding information that may easily have been lost, and finding people who could help tell the story of Tomasha. Right. Well, I'm a professional journalist, but my mother 
acted as as a journalist through this whole process. Mm -hmm. She once she became engaged in writing down her history and decided she needed to do it, she would question our relatives intensely. You know, sometimes we'd go together, sometimes it would just be on her own. Uh, chats with her, her great aunt, her my great aunt, her aunt. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, very, you know, what was ex what what exactly happened on that day? Um, who was there? Who was in the room? Um, how did it all progress? Uh, so a lot of it is oral. At the same time, uh, we did go back to Tomashov um, and we went to Auschwitz as well. Now we all know that the Germans kept incredible records. Uh, we spent hours and hours in the library at the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum uh, working with the archivists there, mm -hmm. uh, going through the records. When exactly did her transport arrive, how many people, precisely 712, were on her, were in her boxcar, crammed together as cattle would normally be crammed together in those cars. What barrack did she go to first, and then where and where and where. So she, she was able to recreate, I shouldn't say recreate, she was able to confirm the details. She knew the, the facts in her mind, but of course many years go by. So by looking through those precise records, we were able to, to nail down mm -hmm. the details of precisely what had happened. Wow. I saw that in the footnotes, um, there's something called the Yizkor books. Yep. Am I saying that correctly? Right. Yizkor, Yizkor, Yizkor. In, in Hebrew and Yiddish means to remember. So After, can you talk about those a little bit yep. and how you use them? These are, these are extremely important. Um, the survivors from hundreds of, of towns in, in Europe after the war, not immediately after, but years after, uh, they had societies, typically burial societies, but mm -hmm. they, they also, you know, they wanted to be in touch with, with the folks who had survived mm -hmm. from their hometown. Uh, and they knew they had to write down something to, keep, to remember what had happened. Mm -hmm. Um, so people were assigned to write different essays about different topics. Each town, or many towns, have that. Tomashov Mazowiecki also has a Yisker book. Um, and it's written in Yiddish. It's written, uh, some of it in Hebrew, because some survivors moved to Israel. Um, and also a little bit of English as well. So uh, we used uh, certainly parts of the, of the Yisker book uh, to help gain facts. Uh, there were some great pictures in the school books as well. So they were, they were extremely valuable, extremely good resource. Oh, they must be. And where do you access such books? Oh, well, I, I personally have it. My mom mm -hmm. personally has it, you know, mm -hmm. from our town. I mean, mm -hmm. when they were created, you know, we purchased. Uh, oh, so published and available for purchase. Uh, you can't get it at your local Barnes & Noble right. these days. Um, there are a few places where they mm -hmm. do have collections of these mm -hmm. Yisker books. Mm -hmm. uh, the New York Public Library, uh, Dorot uh, Jewish section, they mm -hmm. do have it. Uh, and uh, there are a few other institutions. But mm -hmm. primarily it's just, you know, the people who survived from those towns. Hmm. How did you locate some of the people that you interviewed? A lot of it was word of mouth through, you know, somebody knows somebody and, oh, and this person is coming mm -hmm. to visit. So, uh, you know, some of them, some relatives, mm -hmm. uh, some, you know, people who know somebody. Um, in some cases, uh, there was a relative who maybe, or not a relative, but a friend of somebody who came to visit from Israel. I said, oh, I have to go over, do the interview. So in that case, I did, I interviewed the person uh, mm -hmm. in Hebrew, you know, uh, at somebody's home. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, wherever I could find. Some people over the telephone, uh, as many as possible in person. Uh, so, you know, wherever they were, I, I tried to find them. And, and I should say, not everybody wanted to talk. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I would call some people and they say, no, I, I just can't do it. Couldn't do it. Yeah. And, and, you know, you don't want to, you can't force somebody. Right. And, and right. particularly here, you have to be so sensitive in. Um, you know, in, in confronting this issue with a survivor. I should also add that I was among the first volunteers for the survivors of the Shoah project. So I intentionally interviewed mm -hmm. as many survivors mm -hmm. from Tomashev as I could. 
Were there any particular sources of information that surprised you? You know, might, even though I knew the Germans kept meticulous records, I have to say it was a little surprising to, to actually be there and see each index card in a file. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's astounding, you know, the, the, how meticulous the records were. I mean, ironically, you know, very helpful uh, to recreate the history, to, to, to confirm all the facts. That, uh, that whole trip just must have been intense. Amazing. And intense. 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 Uh, what was it like traveling with your mother to some of those places? Uh, I was watching her all the time. I mean, it was it was it was tense. It was uh, a lot of you know it was stressful. And you know, also we went we went many years ago. This was 1994, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been a work in over mm -hmm. many years. Uh, intense, especially not only because of what had happened, but also because. What was still going on there? That there was there was frankly a lot of anti-Semitism, you know, still in Poland. We go to the door of uh, the house where she lived, and we knocked on the door, and it was slammed in our face. Uh, you know, so there there were certain incidents. What do you feel you learned about your mother through the process of researching and writing with her? My mother's a very strong person. Very strong, very resourceful. Uh, she, once she decided she wanted to to learn, she wanted to record the history. Um, she she went at it uh, with all her her effort, and uh, she she really really dove into the project. Was very engaged, uh, and frankly, you know, really was was functioning like a, like an investigative journalist. Finally, what advice can you give to people who are interested in researching and writing a family or local history? Right. Well, certainly I'd say take advantage of amazing resources like your organization. I mean, this is the first time that I've had the privilege of stepping into the building and I'm just so impressed sitting here. It's spectacular. Thank you. Uh, so it's, it's great to have organizations uh, like this. I mean, the truth is that this book, this story, didn't at all begin as an effort uh, towards genealogy. Mm -hmm. I was really looking just to put history down on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, but so I would say, take advantage of the uh, the resources, um, and then approach it like uh, like your your mean business. <laughs> you know, I mean, just do your research, be investigative. You know, ask the questions, don't hold back, and just pursue it with passion. Great advice. Thank you so much. Thank you.